Let's take a quick poll. How many of you have heard of Dollywood? Okay, now here's the real one. How many of you have been to Dollywood? Ah, all right. So, for a little bit of history, for those of you who haven't been, don't know a lot about us, Dollywood Theme Park opened in 1986, and since then we've added a dinner show, Dixie Stampede, a water park, Dollywood Splash Country, um, cabins, the Smoky Mountain Cabins, and then most recently, just last summer, we opened Dollywood's Dream World Resort and Spa. So we've gone from being you know, more of a small regional theme park in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, to really truly being the, a family vacation destination in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. And you know, as with all change and all growth, there's new opportunities and new challenges. And um, but one challenge for us that we've really always had, and it was a great example this morning in, in keynote, was that sometimes people know about us but haven't been to visit and don't know much about us, or they have a misconception of us because, you know, Dollywood, technology innovators, who would have thought, right? <laughs> but, you know. So one of the challenges we've always sort of had um, at Dollywood is really kind of making sure people actually know who we are and, and telling them about our product and, and making sure they have an accurate picture of what that is. So to help a little bit with that, hopefully the video did that a little bit, but also just to share, um, Dollywood welcomes about 3 million guests a year. And you've heard a lot, you know, in keynotes, and you'll hear a lot more over this next several sessions you're in, I'm sure, but a lot about the site we're talking about the user experience and that guest experience. And that really just falls so much in line with the heart of Dollywood and what we believe in and what we're really passionate about. Because we get to be, you know, who gets to have a fun job like this, right? You get to market for a theme park, maybe go out at lunch and ride a roller coaster or something, right? Um, but we, we love the experience that we get to provide for families. We love the opportunity that we get to ha we have that families choose to spend their time, their precious time with us, and we want to provide an experience that you know really makes the most of that. So, you know, part of that is when they're here, obviously when they visit with us and when they're at the theme park and at the resort. But we certainly want to extend that into the digital places where they're connecting with us maybe first. And so we want to connect with them and have a good experience before they arrive and then lead into that once they get, to get there and actually come visit us. Um, you know, if you ask about anyone, ask anyone who's actually been to Dollywood, you're going to hear a couple of things. You're going to hear maybe all these incredible things that we did while we were there. But the other thing that you're going to hear is, let me tell you this amazing story about how I was treated while I was at Dollywood. Because one of the things that, you know, made us, the thing that makes us most unique um, and the thing that we take great pride in is the way that we, that authentic Southern hospitality experience that you get. That when you come, we welcome you like family. We, you know, we, we show you, we show you all of the great things about the Smoky Mountains and we really get to share that with you. Um, now we certainly have the thrill rides that you have to have if you're a theme park ride of any caliber. So you can go right while legal. Ryan will obviously take you to the Thunderhead and ride that ride, that wooden coaster with you anytime. Um, but, and so you can have that great thrill experience. But what a lot of folks don't know is all of the other things that we offer. So one of the biggest being, we have award-winning entertainment and festivals because, I mean, frankly, you can't put Dolly Parton's name on the sign out front and not have that, right? That would be a big mess. Um, so we have those, but we also have craft demonstrations that really feature and highlight the region and the area and the people. Um, we, have an amazing, we have amazing southern food, um, far, far beyond your funnel cakes and your corn dogs, that we have really good ones of those too. So, you know, again, for us, it's all about that full experience, and it's about that full experience with a full family. So from the toddler all the way up to grandma and grandpa, we want the whole family to have something that they can enjoy, that they can come and do together. Um, we really, that's our goal, is to bring families together, have them come, get away from the everyday, share those family memories, build those shared memories and moments that they can take with them, and that those, you know, those things will last a lifetime. So, you know, obviously, huge message to share. You're trying to overcome some thoughts about maybe who, who, who you are as a company. Um, but you're also trying, trying to share a full scope of what you offer. And so as we try to do that in the digital channels, um, you know, that can be difficult. And, you know, as I'm sure many of you all have the same experience, you know, in your perfect world, all your systems align, all your data talks to one another, 
you know, that's the utopia we all wish we lived in. But we all live in the real world, right? Where this data over here doesn't talk to this data here, and this system doesn't connect to that system. And so how do I how do I give the guests a good experience even though those things aren't happening? And so when we partnered with um, ARC and with Sitecore to really kind of step through those things, um, you know, we had several challenges that we were facing. And so, um, you know, from my side, from the Dollywood team, I sort of lead that charge from the marketing digital side. So I'm the one at the property level that's saying, hey, here are the things we want to be able to do, but we can't. Here are the things that are our challenges and the places where we're struggling. And then I call my friend Brian at Hershen to say, how can you help me? How can you help me get there? And so I'm going to talk you through a few of the challenges that we were facing, and then Brian's going to take in and talk through sort of how we started to address those. So our first one uh, was just that we had no ability to test our messaging, our call to action, our creative, our images, any of that. We just had no way to do that on the side originally. Secondly, we had no ability to communicate relevant messages. So whether you were coming to visit us from 300 miles away, or you were a visitor across the street, I had to talk to you the very same way, which obviously is not what we would be wanting to do. So I couldn't, I couldn't separate any of that. Thirdly, as I mentioned before, we had siloed data. Um, we have an incredible season pass holder database. They're our most loyal customers. Um, very important to us, and we've collected a lot of information about them over the years. So we actually know a lot about them, but I couldn't do anything with that information because it was all siloed in one place. And then the fourth um, was that because of our ticketing system, um, our back-end resort system, all of those different purchasing paths and purchasing systems, um, we have separate e-commerce platforms. So the challenge of did what I showed on the front end actually translate into a transaction? I don't know because it went through three different sites. So that was also our challenge. So those are the four things, and then Brian can talk to you sort of about how we started to address those. Great, thanks. So uh, it won't be a surprise to anybody in the room, I don't think. You know, the, the, the objective is obviously to be able to test some of the things that we wanted to test, both A, B, and, and multivariate testing. Uh, we wanted to be able to personalize our content. Uh, and you've already heard about that a lot in both keynotes uh, this morning. Uh, but, you know, whether it's on campaign, whether it's on geography, or something else, we want to be able to talk more relevantly. Um, the, all that data that Jennifer just mentioned, we wanted to be able to use it. We wanted to be able to put it to use and, and start to see results from it. And then finally, and probably the most complex from a technical standpoint, is being able to track all of this through our multiple systems. And that's what I want to talk a little bit more about right now. So as Jennifer mentioned, my role um, at, a, at more of a corporate or parent company level uh, that touches all of our properties is to look at the platform and the systems and our vendor partners and say, how can we make all this work for the individual needs of the properties? And so you know, what we've got is this situation where all of our, what we would call our brochureware, our brand content, the great pictures and videos, et cetera, those are what reside in Sitecore, and you see the Sitecore logo down there. Um, so if you just go to dollywood.com, that's what you're going to find. But then depending on what you're trying to do, book a cabin, book a hotel, buy a ticket, buy a season pass, you're going to leave a Sitecore environment, you're going to go off to a third-party e-commerce site. And we need to be able to track that experience all the way through and bring that data back into Sitecore so we understand what converted, what worked, what didn't work. Um, and so uh, to give you a little bit more detail, you've got everybody coming into dollywood.com because that's where we drive our emails, our display, our search, all of our paid and, and uh, earned and owned media go there. And then from there, it's where you go off to these other sites. Um, and so we've got these e-commerce systems or booking systems. They're talking to uh, essentially base or source systems. So how do we make all that work together? And um, so we are actually using Federated Experience Manager. I think you might have heard a little bit about that this morning. Uh, Martin's going to give a lot more detail about that later today. But basically, it allows us to connect the dots and bring the data from those third-party e-commerce systems back into Sitecore and get that complete picture. Uh, and uh, so from here, what we want to do is start to give you, as Lars noted, you know, let's talk more do. What did we do and, and start doing with Sitecore 
So I'm going to ask Jennifer to come back up and tell you a little bit about what we did from a multivariate and A-B testing standpoint, and then I'll talk a little bit about personalization. So one of the first tests that we did um, surrounded our season pass campaign. And as I mentioned to you all, um, our season pass holders, I mean, that's a, it's a huge base for us. It's a huge segment of, of our visitors. And um, so this campaign is a big one for us. Um, so we actually launched our season pass campaign in, Mar I mean, in March, in November, when our, our Christmas season starts. So when our Christmas festival starts, you can actually purchase a season pass for the next year right now. And so that's why I did Christmas imagery and all of that. But so. One of the things um, that we wanted to test last year was really what was that best call to action. And so we've kind of blown up what the messages were kind of at the bottom so you can kind of see them a little bit better. But A, um, the call to action was purchased today before the offer ends. B was offer ends January the 3rd. C was prices go up soon. And D, prices go up after January the 3rd. So those are the four that we were trying to test. So we're going to do a survey again. So who votes for A? B, C, D. Okay. Well, you know, these were messages that we had used throughout the years and, and had really had no way to test them. And so we didn't know, you know, just like we've got a, a, a smattering throughout the audience here of, of opinions, we sort of had that in our office as well. So we didn't know, so we needed to test it. So we put the test out there in our fourth place was C. So this one actually dropped out pretty early. We were able to see pretty early in the campaign that then the conversion rate on it was actually 18% below the next one. Um, so that one kind of, we let that one go and just kept the other three. So third place went to A, which was purchased today. Um, so we, we kind of narrowed it down to those last two. And so the second place was for in January 3rd. So our winner was prices go up after January 3rd, and we found that that one actually performed 21% better than the third place and almost 10% better than the second place. So it was really something we were, you know, it was a great learning for us. It was something that we were able to use across all channels. Um, because our season pass campaign does start in November and runs through the spring, these were actually learnings that we could use even, in, you know, during the rest of the season pass campaign. And here's an example of where we did that. Um, these are actually um, deadlines that we had in March for that same campaign. Um, and you can see we, we, went, we went hard with that prices go up after and then the date. And so um, we were really pleased with this. Um, I can tell you that we had one of our best season past years ever. Um, so we were really, um, really happy with what we really felt like this, you know, was a help in contributing to that. Another campaign that we worked on, uh, you know, as the resort is pretty new to us, we're still learning a lot about it. And um, so one of the things that we wanted to do is sort of test what messaging really is working, what really resonates with our guests. And so we did sort of that control at the top, which really just had the logo, um, you know, as placement, and then, the, then, the, then we tested the messaging. So the first variant that we tried was a third night free promotion that we had going on at the time. The second one was an enjoy exclusive guest privileges. Um, and this was a headline that we uh, went out with pretty strongly when we launched the resort because we felt that one of the one of the really exclusive things that you get as a guest at the resort are those park privileges that you can't get any other way. So we felt like that would probably resonate with guests. And then the third one was skip the regular theme park lines, which is actually it, it actually is a guest privilege. It's just calling out one of them very specifically. And so the interesting thing that we found and learned off of this was both the pro promotion, which was that third night free, and the skip the regular line, um, both of those actually performed better than that overarching message of enjoy exclusive guest privileges. So we actually you know, adjusted a lot of what we're doing as we move forward to try to call those individual ones out or to offer those promotions, because it was certainly a learning for us, something we thought would resonate a little bit more than it actually did. And then the third one, this is one we ran just not too long ago. It was right at the end of our summer season. And um, it was a project called Play Like a Kid, Pay Like a Kid. And this was one of those really funny, like, 
it's the end of the summer, we gotta get promotion out, you know, we're, everybody's scurrying around the office and here's the creative. And so we had one out there and we said, well, is that really the best message? Is that what we should be doing? So why don't we test it? Because we now can, right? So we did. So we threw, um, we went back and adjusted the creative to have a few options, one of which was the save 20%. Um, the other was save $13, and then the third one was just the price point. It, 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 it included the discount, but what was that price point message? Um, so on this one, um, I'll just share with you what we thought in the office. Our opinion in the office was that save 20% would go best because we felt like it was the best message of the, of the discount. But as it turned out, the price point actually performed the best. So actually just calling out the price point, it doesn't even say how much you save. It was just the, here's your price, and, and it, it performed better than any of us thought. So again, it was that we don't know what the answer is, and if we had gone, you know, sometimes you go with your gut and you're right, but sometimes you're not. So if you don't know, or sometimes you think you know, go ahead and test it, because there's lots of learnings that can happen there. Great, thanks. So from a personalization perspective, uh, there are uh, a few things that we did over this past year, and we'll, we'll share a couple of those. The, the first one was actually a midsummer uh, offer, and this was uh, based on geography. And for us, uh, we speak very differently to guests that are local market that are probably only going to visit for a day versus guests that are coming from uh, outside, say, 100 or more miles that had the opportunity to at least spend one night, maybe multiple nights. Uh, and so what we did is personalize the homepage uh, based on geography. We, we used it off of zip code. So we had a control. Uh, that's one of the great things about uh, Sitecore and being able to personalize is when you first put out that personalization, you do it as a test because what you want to make sure of is that when you personalize, it actually works. Uh, and so the control is the, the one at the top uh, with just purchase tickets. The one-day ticket offer obviously was for the local market, and then we had a, a three-day two-park ticket where you can over three days visit the theme park and the water park uh, offer. And what we found here was interesting. The one-day ticket offer, the local market, did perform better than the control uh, during the period that we were testing, but the, the outer market offer did not. Um, now, there could be many reasons why it didn't, but again, had we not tested it and just said, oh, well, let's just do personalization for personalization's sake, we might have actually been hindering conversion on our outer market guests. So that's one of the great things that's built into Sitecore is you launch personalization with a test, and then you can quickly see, did our assumptions or, or what we thought would work, work? And if it does, roll it out and have it go 100% out to everybody. But if it doesn't, adjust and, and make sure that you're going with the best message. Another, uh, uh, going back to our season pass campaign, which Jennifer spoke about. These are, this is email creative you're looking at. This is not a, a Sitecore web page. But we, have, uh, we speak very differently to guests that might have a pass currently and they're an opportunity to renew their pass for the next year versus people that are buying pass uh, for a first time or maybe after a long lapse, say more than three seasons, they haven't had a pass. So we speak very differently to them and we want them to see uh, different creative when they land on the site. Now we could create, you know, multiple different pages and have different URLs and send people to those. But Sitecore provides the opportunity where through one page you can simply personalize the content on that page based on, in this case, in this case a campaign ID. So the emails are, are tagged with a campaign ID. It's just a URL parameter you put on the end of, of the link, uh, in this case renewal details or season pass details. And when they click that link, Sitecore looks at that parameter and says, oh, this is a renewal, show them the renewal message, which was a, essentially a free ticket for this Christmas to bring a friend if they renewed their pass, uh, as opposed to new pass holders, just got the, the promotion of if you buy your pass now, you're actually going to get Christmas for this season, plus you get the whole next season, which includes Christmas. So essentially, you get one Christmas for free. Uh, but you're able to do that based off uh, personalizing on the campaign parameter. So uh, that's just another example of how we used uh, personalization. Um, now, the last piece of the puzzle um, from, a, from a marketing business standpoint is, okay, we've run these tests, we've done this personalization, but what are we going to learn from it? How do we know what's working or, or what do we need to do next? What can we take from the, the tests and the, uh, the things that we've done um, and, and optimize off of those? So for us, there are a couple different ways that you can look at it in Sitecore, and I probably should have specified we're on 8.1. 
um, is the version we're on. So if some of the things I'm showing on the screen, you're like, I don't see that in my version of Sitecore. That, that might be the reason. But uh, on the left, what you're seeing are some visitor profiles. So we uh, tag our pages in Sitecore with a, with a profile of who the person might be that's visiting that page. So think about someone uh, that visits a lot, a lot of the water park pages. They probably have an interest in going to the water park. Same thing with the resort or the cabins. So we can uh, start to pattern match people based on how they are navigating the site. Uh, and it sort of uh, turns into a site interest. What are, what are they most interested in? Um, and then you can look at those pattern matches and see, okay, how many visits do we have based on those patterns? And so what you'll, what you'll find are that we have a lot of visits, say, to the theme park section. The theme park has been around the longest. It's the most known entity of Dollywood is the Dollywood theme park. And so what you find is your largest number of visits that match that pattern uh, are what are coming to the site. But on the very far right, you've got the value per visit. Um, and that's based on uh, some data that we put into Sitecore. Uh, for us, value is earned when someone books. They buy a ticket, they make a booking at the resort or a cabin, something like that. And what you see is we have all these visitors that have a site interest in theme park, yet their value per visit is pretty low. Conversely, um, I press the button, there we go. Uh, though, and I know it's hard to read, but we're circling water park. So people that had an interest in water park had a much smaller number of visits to the site overall from a pattern standpoint, but their value per visit much higher. So you know, what that tells you is that when you, you look at this data, you need to figure out how do we optimize for people that are interested to theme parks to get more of them to convert, or conversely, how do we attract more water park visitors to the site or people that have an interest in the water park to, to come to the site because they have a higher value per visit. So those are the, the kinds of things you can, you can learn. Another thing that you can look at is just pure traffic to the site from a page level. So that was sort of broadly looking at interest groups or, or site profiles or patterns. But you can also look at different pages. So here's just a few pages with some raw page names in there and their associated value per visit. And what you find is that when you compare that to the pages that drive value, another example, lots of people come to the site to look at the calendar. They go to the calendar page, but the calendar page does not drive a high value per visit. Uh, it possibly could, but it, it doesn't. Conversely, if you look again at Water Park, far fewer visitors, uh, about uh, 16,000 fewer visitors, but almost double to triple the value per visit. So again, what can we do possibly to optimize that calendar page? Could there be a call to action above the fold that after people have seen, oh, the park's open 10 to 6 today, they can click buy now right there and get into the booking path versus us making them figure out, how do I go back to that page with the buy now button or, or something like that? So those are the kind of things that you can look at when you're digging into the insights. Um, you heard a lot of information this morning on the path analyzer. And um, they actually used some of our data set to, to sort of uh, demo this morning. And for us, uh, you know, what's interesting is to look at those, those paths that people take. So what you're looking at right now is one of the most common paths on the site, and that is people land on the home page, uh, which is somewhere. Is my pointer working? There it is, right there. They move to the theme park page, which for us is sort of the, when you go to Dollywood, uh, dot com, you're on more of a portal page, and then you can dig deeper into the theme park or the water park or the resort or the cabins, etc. So a lot of people go to the theme park page, and then from there, a lot of people are interested in rides. What roller coasters do you have? Or what rides for kids do you have? Very common path, but what you can see is that as, as people move from the home page to the theme park, it goes from green to red. That's bad in Path Analyzer. That means something is not working as well as it could, that there's a different path that converts better. So the opportunity here is, well, how can we make, it's a very common path. We know people want to do that. How can you make that path convert better? How can you turn it from red to green? Um, uh, next, you can also look at it maybe from a campaign level. That was from a pure visit level. Uh, but a campaign level, if you remember the renewal campaign that I talked about a few minutes ago, uh, people come in, uh, came in on that renewal page. And last year, in addition to, you know, it was the Christmas season, we had a lot of Christmas imagery, but we were also promoting our newest coaster, which is Lightning Rod. It's the world's fastest wooden launch coaster, um, or first wooden launch coaster. And so a lot of people were interested in understanding this new ride. So they would go to the Lightning Rod page, but as you can see, red dot, 
um, they, weren't, they weren't making their way as efficiently back to, to, in this case, renew their pass. So what does that mean? It can mean a couple things. It can mean we could adjust what's on that renewal page to make sure we sort of capture that conversion immediately, or we can make sure, again, there's a clear call to action on the lightning rod page to get them back into that conversion path so that even though they want to go there, that they stay green, that they sort of keep converting. Uh, and so, again, how can we optimize the page? So that's a lot of the, the data that's available to you in, in Sitecore and specifically 8.1 that'll really help you understand what are the opportunities, what's the next thing that I can do. Uh, so Jennifer and I have talked a lot about sort of the, the marketing and business side. And now what I want to do is ask Martin to come up uh, because he was sort of the magic on the back end, especially on the FXM side, and sort of explain a little bit more how that's working and, and how we were able to sort of Again, tie all these pieces together. Martin? Thank you, Brian. Come on. OK. Um, so I know what most of you are thinking right now. Um, you have a cycle developer who's going to be talking about configuration. It's going to be ultra complex, and you guys are probably going to fall asleep. Um, You'll be uh, pleasantly surprised to actually find out that it wasn't actually that difficult to configure. Um, if you look at our configuration architecture, and, and, and let me just roll back there. I always say it was, it was so easy to set up that even Brian could do it. So <laughs> Jennifer made me say that, so there you go. <laughs> anyway, so if you look at our uh, current configuration, um, wh what we're currently working on is a CRM integration, and uh, Brian and I will talk more about that uh, later on in the presentation. Um, but the key component in this whole configuration was Federated Experience Manager. Um, I'm just curious to see who of you guys actually heard of Federated Experience Manager prior to coming to Symposium. Okay, good number of you. And how many of you actually have uh, FXM implemented? Okay, good stuff. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that. So, so Federated Experience Manager is, is really, really simple to set up. So, so basically, um, when we set our environment up, you just go in and you, know, you put in the URL of that external website. Um, and then what happens is uh, Cycle FXM will give you back a, a single line of JavaScript, which is called the Beacon Script. And you'll see that in the, in the top piece over there. And so basically all you need to do is you need to plug that Beacon Script on your external website. So in some cases, you may need to get a developer involved if your external website doesn't have a, a content management backend. But in, 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 if it does, then you could really just plug it in yourself. And uh, you obviously want to put it in a, a global place so that it's accessible from, from each page. Um, and that's all there is to it. After you have that in place, now you can actually track the, the visitors that are going from Cycle to the external site and back and forth, right? Um, you can set up, you get all the, 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 the things that make Cycle great. You can set up goals on the pages on that external site. Um, you can uh, actually use Sitecore to change the content on those external on the external websites too. Um, you you can uh, what else can you do? Oh, you, obviously Sitecore personalization, right? You want to be able to uh, do personalization on the on the content that you're loading on those external sites and and actually do A/B testing, multivariate testing on on the content too. So. All those magical things can happen just by placing that single line of JavaScript on that external site. Um, and this was key for, uh, you know, Brian spoke about in the beginning, we have, you know, Sitecore, and then we have these, these external sites where we handle the bookings and the commerce and whatnot. And this was key for us because we needed to be able to determine uh, what content was responsible for driving the most conversions, right? And obviously the conversions were happening on the external websites. Uh, in this day and age, I hope that most of us have a uh, mobile optimized website, responsive site or something to that nature. So we, we obviously do. And so what we're able to do is actually um, set up uh, mobile specific goals. And what this helped us do was actually determine uh, what mobile content was responsible for the most conversions and get us, give us obviously some great insights into that. Uh, one cool thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into now is uh, you guys saw in the keynote the, uh, uh, the path analyzer, and Brian showed you what, you know, what ours looks like in our site, for instance. Um, we, I worked with Alex Sheba on a, on a module that actually fits on top of path analyzer called the uh, Funnel Explorer, which was really cool. 
Um, and so part of that configuration was really just using FXM uh, Experience Editor and just assigning goals to each of the individual pages on your external site. And by doing that, you're able to get some great reports, some great insight into what is actually happening within that, that purchase funnel. You can see you know, when, they, when the user navigates to that page, it triggers the goal, and that's what that data is uh, what you see populated in that, uh, in that graphic over there. And you can see over here, step one, step two, those are the actual, the real names of the goals that are getting triggered as you, you're navigating through the, uh, in this case, the, the commerce site. Um, this is the most important uh, page, you know, at the end of the, the purchase process when you complete your booking. Um, and this is where we actually, we have a goal with, uh, uh, with an assigned value to it, with assigned points, right? Because now, uh, when we trigger this, the person's on the, you know, they completed the, the purchase and stuff. Now, because we have a goal with value, um, now we're able to, if they, they're coming off on, on an A-B test or, or a campaign or whatever, we can now determine what content drove that conversion, right? Um, we also do a, a little bit of fanciness on this page uh, using uh, uh, FXM. We're actually able to pull out the, uh, the total quantity of, uh, of the purchase, you know, the number of tickets or, you know, rooms booked or whatever, uh, and send that along with the total price of the purchase um, to uh, XDB via FXM. And that is also used in that nice report that you see um, over there. And I just you know, blurred out some things, so we don't want to share too much information there. But um, so some great, great insight, and as you can tell, not too much crazy configuration um, using Federated Experience Manager. Uh, this is just uh, giving a little more detail about the, uh, the Funnel Explorer. Uh, so you can actually click through um, each one of the stages within the funnel. And uh, like Path Analyzer, within that, st within that stage, you can actually uh, take a look at the uh, the path that the users actually took to get to that point. And obviously you want, like Brian was saying earlier, you want um, uh, your path which has the most visitors in it to be the green path, right? You want that to be the, um, the, the most efficient path. So looking at this information, you can actually you know, uh, make some decisions on how to, to make that happen. Uh, what's, what's nice too is you can also click out and you can, you can get a detail of the actual visitors who are actually within that segment of the purchase funnel. And click on out and you can see, like we saw earlier, the, the experience profile, you know, the, the actual detail of that contact, who they are, um, where they're coming from, the amount of time they're spending on your site, and basically all they're doing. So great, great insights. Okay, I am going to hand it over to Brian, he's gonna talk about uh, some of the CRM stuff that, we, that we're working on. Great. So we're, we're always um, trying to move along uh, and keep doing some new stuff, and so uh, Martin had a slide earlier that sort of had CRM in a future state box, and that's sort of the next thing that we wanna tackle, uh, and again, going back to our objectives, leveraging uh, the CRM data. So for us, um, you know, it's good to be personalized at a very high level, geography um, or what campaign they came from, and that, and that is great. But we have so much data about our guests, it would be even better if we could do it on more of a one-to-one -one, uh, level. And, and for us, in our CRM database, not only do we collect a lot of the information we have, but we also have some third-party appended data like presence of children in the household uh, and household income range, et cetera. And for us, that, that allows us to speak much more specifically. Um, what's interesting, Jennifer sort of alluded to this a little bit in her description of Dollywood. We have a, we have a lot of different offerings, and for us, we have two primary uh, demographic groups that visit us. It's families with kids, and it's adult couples. So think more of an empty nester couple uh, or a retired couple. Uh, and they come for very different things. As you can imagine, families with kids are doing a lot of the rides, and, and uh, enjoying a lot of that, whereas adult couples tend to come more so for a lot of the entertainment, the food, the crafts. So you can imagine if we knew that kind of information for someone landing on the site, we could be much more intentional about the, especially the imagery we're showing them. Uh, so if, if you happen to be, and I mean, there's plenty of uh, coaster enthusiasts that are up in age, but if you happen to be a, you know, 70 year old retired couple, you might be more compelled to visit Dollywood if you had some really good imagery of entertainment and food versus a 
you know, a looping uh, winged coaster. Uh, so, you know, if we can speak to people like that, it makes a lot more sense. And so for us, um, there's that, there's, you know, where they are from a pass experience, have they been a pass holder or not, have they made a purchase before or not, so have they, have they actually been to our park, all these different things that we can do to, to be more relevant that, that aren't as high level, they get more to that one-on-one -on -one level. Um, and then, you know, in addition, uh, and then in addition to that, take data that we learn about them in the website and send it back out to uh, CRM and then use that for other campaigns, whether it be direct mail, email, et cetera. So um, if we knew the last time they were on the site or what goals they had triggered, again, we can speak more intelligently to them. Uh, and then uh, ultimately we want to know who's on the site. Right now, sort of anonymous person on the site, we don't know any about them, but when someone is known, again, it sort of shows that we care about them. It's about that experience. And, and you know, Dollywood, you saw the tagline, love every moment. We really pride ourselves on, uh, on knowing our guests and, and providing a very welcoming, make you feel like you're part of the family type experience. And the more, again, we can translate that digitally, the better. Uh, and then show them the content. So we, we go from this anonymous you know, type person to knowing it's Lars. Lars is, is the guest that's on the site. And, uh, and he's visiting us. So from that, um, we'll talk a little bit more. Uh, Martin, if you want to step up and just talk a little bit about uh, how the CRM integration works in a slightly more technical manner. Um, well, actually, I'll, I'll keep this very high level. Um, so yeah, it, it starts with an email campaign. You know, as you know, most email campaigns have a, a, a link in them with some uh, query string parameters so you can do, you know, trigger certain things. We're doing the same thing. So uh, what, we, what we'll do is send out a, a, an email campaign with a link with a, uh, a specific parameter with, that contains a unique identifier of the user in the CRM system. And so what, the, what that allows us to do is when they land on a, a, a a page within Cycle, we can look at that, that ID and we can do the lookup in Cycle and then, sorry, look up in CRM and then uh, get the, the information that we care about that Brian was talking about, you know, household income, uh, you know, if they have children in the household, all that stuff. We were able to take that information about the contact in CRM and bring it into XDB. So you can see uh, things like, you know, in Lars's case, if he has children, he has got a pretty good household income there. Um, <laughs> season expiration, all that, that other great information that we can use now in Cycle to obviously give Lars a, a more uh, relative experience, right? Because the end goal is we want to show him relative content. And you can see that we've got some rules around this, giving us a lot of power. Um, we want to show Lars relevant content because we, we want to guide him to, uh, to obviously buy season passes for the entire family. Okay. I'm going to hand this back over to Brian and Jennifer who are going to wrap this up. All right, so, you know, sort of that now that you do, right? How do you take this? How do you go home? What would we tell you after what we've done? Um, I, so we're going to kind of run through these, but really, you know, first off, identify what your goals are. Um, for us, you know, we also may not necessarily be just your digital goals, but what are all of your marketing goals? For as you, so as you saw with Season Pass, Season Pass is a huge campaign for us. That's a big goal for our department. How does what I did ladder up into all that? So identify your goals, crawl, walk, run. It's really important. There's so much you can do. Keep it, keep it simple because there's still a lot of learning, even in the crawl phase. Right. And so next we would tell you to sort of create that plan and prioritize, right? So again, for us, we would say focus on those critical KPIs. Uh, by far, the season pass program is the number one thing for Dollywood. That was one of the first things that we actually used some of the enhanced functionality for. Uh, but then after that, it's ticket sales and it's resort sales. And so you saw the examples that we did today were focused on selling tickets and booking rooms. So again, line, align those and prioritize those different uh, tests and different plan, uh, executions that you want to do, uh, whether it be multivariate testing or personalization, and align them to the KPIs. Thirdly, I'm going to tell you, you know, look at your inbound channels, all of them, you know, be it direct mail, you know, whatever those are. Make sure you're taking advantage of all those, out, those channels that are coming in so that you're driving those to that relevant content that you're creating. And then finally, again, I, I can't stress, use, use the learnings that you get. Uh, make sure that you, you're using Path Analyzer, that you're going in and looking at your value per visit and understanding where you can optimize. 
and, and then start to change, make, make actual changes on the website. It goes all the way back to the, you know, less talk, more do. Uh, so just do that. So um, with that, I'm going to let Jennifer wrap us up. So lastly, I would not be a marketer, right? I don't say, you know, the most, very, very most important thing that I would leave you with is when you leave the symposium and you go home, run home, <laughs> make your plan, pack your bag, come visit us in Tennessee, come visit Dollywood. Um, and we do have a special offer for you. So um, we'd love for you to come visit us. Let me know your